Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's session on managing school studies with NTSC and Olympiads preparation. I'm your host for the evening and will be moderating the discussion today. So we are joined here today by our fantastic panelists who have been teaching and mentoring students for years and have worked hard along with them to help them pursue their dreams and achieve their goals. So let's welcome our first panelist, Mr. Anurag Tiwari, the National Academic Director for Akash Medical Wing. He's also a distinguished chemistry faculty and has more than 17 years of experience in teaching and mentoring students for medical entrance examinations, Olympiads, and scholarship examinations such as KVP1. A very warm welcome, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Kama, ma'am. Uh, it's a great to be here in this panel. Thank you. Also joining us as panelists is Mr. Vivek Bhatt, the National Academic Director at Akash Foundations. He's also a distinguished mathematics faculty and has more than 20 years of experience in teaching and mentoring students for engineering entrance exams, school and board exams, NTSC and Olympiads. A very warm welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Actually, I'm very excited that I'm part of such a great panel, such a great discussion part. Thank you so much. So in today's session, uh, we will talk about how to manage school studies with NTSC, KVPY, Olympiad, and competitive entrance exam preparation, discover the benefits of appearing in uh, scholarship exams, and learn about the benefits of starting preparation early. So we have received a lot of questions from many of you who are joining us today. Thank you for your questions. Uh, we'll be happy to take any additional questions if possible during the webinar. You can share them in the comment section below. So now without further ado, uh, let's get started with the session. Uh, Anurag, sir, uh, the very first question which we have, uh, as we know in the ever increasing world of competition, uh, participating in competitive entrance examination has become very important. However, at the same time, it is also very stressful. A lot of students have asked how to manage school studies with competitive exam preparation. Uh, uh, wonderful question. And uh, you know, nowadays, if you talk about uh, the quantum of students who are facing this challenge is actually enormous. So it's a very important question to become the first question of the webinar. Uh, you know, let's understand first whether school studies, the syllabus are reinforcing the competitive exam preparation or they are antagonistic to each other. So first of all, I would say they are cooperative. If we talk about school studies, school syllabus and competitive exam syllabus, then they are cooperative. They are no different from each other. Just the exam pattern is different along with along with a bit variation in approach of preparation of competitive examination vis-a-vis -vis school exam preparations. So that difference has to be coped up. And as far as syllabus is concerned, as far as exam pattern is concerned, we can talk about those two different things. So syllabus is similar, concepts are same. And if we talk about exam pattern, then one is more on the subjective side and other is purely objective. So this is the difference. That's why approach becomes different. Now, all as a, as a student, all you need to do is to believe that they are not different, rather complementary to each other. So the state of mind, first of all, needs to be in line with the preparation of a school exam as well as competition exam. So first we need to make sure that we are on right state of mind. Now, how to manage? Very simple thing. You plan your studies from the beginning in such a way that you move chapter by chapter. And as you solve the MCQs post complete, completing a chapter to make sure that you are enough prepared for competitive examination at the same time, do not delay it. At the same time, you just go through the questions of NCRT and write the descriptive answers as well. And believe you me, you will be getting maximum 15 to 20 questions of descriptive pattern. And if you solve, if you write the answer of those descriptive questions after completing the chapter, as you do MCQs for competitive examinations, then definitely you will not be away from the school exam preparation. 
while both the things will go along since syllabus is same if you have studied the ncert once if you read the concept if you got understood all those things then definitely whether you are solving the mcqs or writing the descriptive answer you will be having concept for both the things just important thing is to make sure that you are acquiring the writing skills as well all together as you go along chapter by chapter and if you are losing writing the descriptive answers you are just doing mcqs and so many chapters are completed then you will feel little scared that you do not have lot of writing skills so as you go along if you are putting your writing skills into the preparation then it is not going to be difficult so this is all what i wanted to say about you know managing school studies and entrance exam all together thank you sir those were very wonderful tips yeah i would also like to add on one point as anurag sir rightly said see it is very important that i can understand nowadays with this pandemic scenario stress portion is pretty higher i agree on this point but at the same time it is also important to understand that at times different boards have reduced the syllabus so it is reducing your that stress stress part if you understand the difference of the two exam patterns as so clearly mentioned it is important for you to understand the examination pattern different olympiads different scholarship exams different competitive exams of the senior level they have different patterns like je has different one neat has different one ntse has different one inos has different ones so all patterns are different what you need to understand the difference of these patterns whichever you are aiming for once you are aligned in with that direction it is very easy for you as sir rightly mentioned it is supplementing it's not different it may need some additional steps but it's not different and if you understand that i'm sure it's not difficult it's fun learning because these are not your regular school exams these are increasing your knowledge base these are fun thank right. you sir those were uh, very in uh, you know valuable insights so this brings us to our second question uh, vivek sir ntsc is considered as uh, an important scholarship examination in the country so what are its benefit to students and how to manage preparing for ntsc along with school and board exams so how to manage i'm sure that part is a little bit already answered by anurag sir in the first question because when you talk about ntsc or any olympiad you need to understand the difference you need to go step by step you need to schedule your day with proper caution so when you talk about the importance yes being an ntsc scholar this gives you extra edge at many platforms be it admission in different international colleges admission in certain indian engineering colleges as, as well when you talk about triple it that gives additional bonus points bangalore that again gives you some additional uh, points on it so there are certain institutions which are giving you additional points when you are an nts scholar above all most important thing when you are nts scholar that means you have extra element within you your confidence level becomes very very high now come to the second part how to prepare how to prep see it's very important for every student to understand that stage 1 is state wise stage 2 is national level when you talk about stage 1 if you are cbse or icse student remember your paper would come from the state board syllabus only but it's not different cumulative when you take the syllabus roughly it is 9th and 10th standard science math social science and mental ability the general one so when you take these topics from 9th and 10th whether state cbsc icsc you will find more or less these are similar when it is pcmb physics chemistry bio mathematics but when it when it comes to social science yes it varies state to state so it plays a game changer in addition mental ability there are 100 questions straight so this is also playing a game changer so what you need to remember social science you need to study separately from the state board second mental ability 
you need to practice more and more on this part because as much you would be practicing you would be getting better speed you would be getting better accuracy and would be getting better chances of clearing this stage one examination so this is about ntsc stage one then comes the stage two part which is national level and has syllabus of ncrt yes the pattern of questions is bit different a bit complex because statement based questions are also being involved but i will advise every student please ensure just go through with your last five years questions of your state so that you would be properly aligned with different uh, different element of your state particularly for example i can quote haryana as a very different element what they used to do they ask jumbled questions in math in sat part they are not giving physics first then chemistry then bio then mathematics as other states are doing they are giving jumbled one so student has to be very clear on this point yes i have to go this direction i have to approach like this they should know it uh, it, uh, it definitely reduces their wastage of time so that's my advice on ntsc part very well explained sir so uh, moving on next question anurag sir uh, needless to say uh, olympiads are all about bringing the best out of students and also a great way to boost their confidence level so uh, what are the benefits of olympiads and you know how to pre manage preparing for them along with school studies yes uh, so uh, again uh, if you talk about olympiads as uh, vivek sir already mentioned for ntsc Uh, on similar line if you talk about benefits then i would say you know uh, first of all student must clear in their mind why to go for olympiads so i have some you know uh, very important points which i can tell all the students here so first point is you know before you go and appear for your professional entrance examination like neat je if you are a student of senior wing maybe 11th or 12th or maybe you are in a 8th 9th 10th because olympiads are divided into two parts one is for the uh, junior classes like 8th 9th 10th other is for 11th 12th so everywhere whenever you go for olympiad you first experience the scenario of competitive exams before you appear in actual exam of your professional course because ultimately if you are targeting for neat or je so you will be having one day to perform well you will be having one day to bear that kind of pressure that kind of stress so before that if you get into the real simulation and if you experience the similar kind of scenario of competitive exam you will be literally prepared well for that d day which will be coming in the form of either je or neat and maybe ntsc as well now the second point is if you appear in the exam no matter whether you qualify or not but if you take it in a positive sense then it always raises your confidence in the subject at the next level so if you want to raise your confidence you do appear in the exam and if you will be qualifying the exam then definitely your confidence level will be reaching at the next to next level and even though if you are not qualified you will be having something in yourself that you have cracked certain number of questions in olympiad and obviously that will transform into the bigger success once you will be appearing for neat or je now the third important aspect is you will be able to learn from your errors error can be of two types one maybe subject related error you were attempting the question and you have not attempted the right option option that means you have attempted something which would not be repeated ever in future in neat or je so you'll be able to learn that the second kind of error is appearing in the exam is an art there is time management the exam taking strategy a lot of things are there which you will be learning there by committing errors before you go in the neat and je the fourth thing is development of examination temperament it can't be created in a day or two the examination temperament is a habit which can be created only by appearing in so many test and in so many exams whichever comes across your path at national and international level the fifth point many universities and colleges across the globe 
they give a big weightage in admission to your credentials if you have qualified in national or international olympiads it is not necessary that every student who will be studying science and mathematics they will be going for neat and je only some of them must be you know trying to get into uh, some good universities to you know pursue basic sciences or allied sciences some may be trying to go to abroad in good universities good colleges so there you will be having really a very good weightage as uh, rightly uh, um, vivek sir said that you know in triple it also there is a weightage of mtsc so different olympiads are also having their own weightage now let's talk about some you know tangible things what you will get you will earn scholarships sometimes if you are qualifying kvpy if you are qualifying some other olympiads then you will be getting scholarships and almost every kind of olympiads provide you certificates which are having an additional advantage for lifetime so these are the tangible things what you will earn from olympiads now the second part of question if you talk about managing olympiads in school studies Vivek sir rightly said, the syllabus is almost same. There is no difference as far as KVPY and different kind of Olympiads are concerned, and the first stage of HBCSC Olympiads as well. So the difference comes with exam pattern only, and to make yourself enough comfortable with the exam pattern, which is different, then you need to do. lot of practice on previous years papers and once exam approaches go for mock test on the same pattern and believe you me you will be prepared well for any kind of olympiad whichever will come across your way very well said sir also uh, students we have a number of uh, blogs uh, we, which we have prepared for olympiads so you can go uh, you know on akash blog and you can find any olympiad you want to with preparation tips and the benefits uh, which are mentioned over there so uh, vivek sir uh, foundation years are without a doubt the most important years of a student's life uh, and especially students who have been studying in class 8th and 9th Uh, however uh, you know a lot of students still wait till class 11th to start their preparation for competitive exams so what are the benefits of starting early very true ma'am when the students are starting their preparation in foundation years that is in 9th and 10th you can always check out like the top rankers in any exam like neat or je any one you will always observe that these students started preparing for this final goal 4 5 years back they start usually in 8th or 9th at the max at 10th standard and the biggest benefit when you are in these classes 8 9 10th everything whatever is coming in 11th and 12th many topics are extension and many are obviously new as well but when you say extension you are always in a position to take that extension part in the previous class itself for example we have chapter motion in physics in 9th standard now this is connected directly with 11th standard if we if we increase our limits of studies if we move up to that height not exactly the entire segment of class 11 but at least some part in 9th itself and how we can do that yes we can always do it because the syllabus difference of 8 9 10th and 11 12th is huge when a student comes in 11th standard he or she always finds like the syllabus has increased enormously they always find it's i mean many fold increment in the syllabus what they studied in 10th and 9th so they say what's that in 11th standard so much of the syllabus and if they start taking up some points in the previous classes these give extra benefit when they move in class 11th and 10th so i always advise them let's take another example when a student is giving neat or je after 12th board examination when they start preparing maximum number of students in 11th standard they are not going to start in the month of april only just to give exam after 10 days any board examination say 10th board examination they are studying for the entire year then they are giving the examination similarly if you are preparing for four years it's going to give you additional benefit and i'm sure uh, every student can 
find this difference. And during this pandemic, I always ask my students, you have more time. Syllabus is cut, many activities are reduced. I'm not saying to stay on a screen most of the time, but I will say you can utilize these golden times and it will help them in getting good seats in future examinations. So that's my point of view. Yeah, I would like to add here something. So, uh, you know, I usually say there are three kinds of students. One, first mover who start really early like in foundation years only. Second, fast mover. They start usually in class 11th or 12th, or sometimes they start preparing after 12th board examination and take a repeat year and uh, they get qualified, right? So they are fast mover who take, you know, less time, but they, uh, you know, do it very, very fast. And third kind of students are first and fast mover. They are blend of both. And these are those students who really start early in foundation years in eighth, ninth, tenth, bit by bit, as Vivek sir said, and they continue doing it with relatively faster pace and they complete all the syllabus well before at least eight to 10 months of the NEET and J examination. And then they start revising, repeating again and again, revisiting the concepts, attempting lots of lots of papers. And then on the D day, you know, the need day or the JE day, that day remains of theirs only, right? So this is this is the third kind of student who are first and fast mover. Very true, very true. Very true, sir. So I think uh, we can conclude over here that starting early not just strengthens your foundation, but also prepares you for the future competitive examinations that you are going to take in the future. Uh, students, we also have a blog uh, on the same topic wherein you can uh, read about why you should start early and what are its benefits and last year we also conducted a webinar on the same you can watch that as well so uh, moving on uh, Anurag sir uh, a student Raji from Bangalore uh, he says I want to know the ideal preparation strategy for KVPY exam so uh, Rajiv, uh, first of all, uh, I, I need to know whether you are in class 11th or 12th. And, and uh, since I can't uh, you know, get uh, any idea about it, so I will be explaining for both. So if you talk about ideal preparation strategy for KVPY exam when you are in class 11th. So class 11th syllabus will not be only asked in KVPY examination. There are some chapters of physics, chemistry, bio, mathematics, which belong to actually class 12th as well. They would also be asked, but you need not to be afraid of that. As you know, you must be knowing, or uh, if you are not knowing, let me tell you, uh, if you are preparing in class 11th and to qualify the theoretical exam, you need to score only 50% marks in general category, if you are in general category. So to cover the 50% syllabus, your class 11 syllabus concepts, chapters would be good enough. So if you are in class 11, remain focused on class 11 syllabus only. And whatever you study, you clear the concepts of class 11. You need not to jump to class 12th. Keep on solving MCQs and do practice previous year's papers, which are easily available and start practicing mock test papers as well, at least a month before the real KVP by exam to make yourself well acquainted with exam pattern and questions. That would be good enough to qualify when you are in class 11th. Now, coming on to the second thing, if you are in class 12th, then you need to focus on both class 11th and 12th syllabus. You can't get away from class 11th and preparing for class 12th syllabus will not be helping you. And when you move to class 12th and you appear for KVP by SX stream, which is absolutely dedicated to class 12th students only, then they would be covering a bigger domain. And again, what you need to do if you are in class 12th, parallelly, you have to revise class 11 syllabus as well. And after revising the concepts, you have to solve previous year's question papers. And again, this strategy will remain same attempt a mock test when you are near to exam. This is how you can prepare for KVPY. But remember, concepts are not going to be different. They are not going to be outside of the your NCRT syllabus. So you need to be confident on the content what you study as per the NCRT. And solving the mock test paper will resolve your all the problems.
Thank you, sir. Uh, those are some amazing tips. So uh, before we move forward, uh, let's take one live question. Uh, there is a student uh, called Kushagra Cha. Uh, Vivek, sir, Kushagra is asking, uh, what is the preparation strategy for PRMO? Okay, so uh, that's good one. First important thing to know is in which class the student is. See, PRMO can be given by any student who is in 8th or 9th or up to even 12th standard. So 8 to 12, anyone can give. So it depends upon the class of the student. Now, if Kushagra is in 8th or 9th or 10th standard, then I will say the syllabus which is required for PRMO, it's not any class specific. There are certain points like you can say sets is there. You can say inequalities, geometry, uh, number theory. So some topics are there. Obviously, se uh, sequence and series and PNCs also being asked, which is obviously there in class 11th standard. But when you look at the broad requirement of PRMO, these topics are actually, many of these are in uh, previous classes like 9th and 10th as well. When you talk about the geometry, it's only 9th and 10th standard. So when you start, when you complete everything of NCRT and the supplementary books, as Anurag sir was mentioning the beginning, the very first question, please go through with every single line of NCRT. So when you are talking about geometry, geometry, yes, you have to go with every single concept and additional as well. Because PRMO is an examination which gives you extra confidence after getting it cleared. Although the concepts, whatever you are utilizing here, uh, many are not being used in further examination like J or other ones. So I will say for PRMO, please remember, depending upon your class, focus on these six topics from any book. Inequalities, number theory, this a little bit of PNC sequence series and trigo as well, but largely on this number theory and geometry part and inequality part, these three majorly. So when you focus on these three, I'm sure you can get through. Another important point, last year it was of 100 marks, previously it used to be of 102 marks. So when you talk about 100 marks or 102, whatever it is, it is sufficient to get around 30, 35% marks to clear PRMO examination. So depending upon your class, again, I will say it's not like 100% is required. Another important point here, last year when this pandemic changed the examination pattern. So instead of PRMO and RMO, another name was used IOQM, Indian Olympiad Qualifier in Mathematics. In IOQM, RMO was scrapped. Paper level was of PRMO, but merit was of RMO level. So instead, as I said, 30, 35% are sufficient. But when you say you are qualifying two levels, PRMO and RMO, so number of seats are reduced. That means you need to get 60% marks in this case. So remember, again, in this year, if such a scenario would be coming again, like just one examination IOQM, you need to ensure you should have 60% marks although it would vary state to state. Thank you, sir. Very well explained. Uh, let's take another live question. Uh, so Anurag, sir, a student, uh, Shashant Singh, is asking, NCR, is NCRT map sufficient for NEET chemistry and physics? Yeah, Sushant, it's a very, very interesting question. If you have already read the NCRT before, at least twice, as, at least twice if you have already read the NCRT, then NCRT map is sufficient for preparation of NEET, whether it is physics, chemistry, or biology. But if you did not read NCRT even once, then I would again suggest first go for NCRT, only then you will be able to capture a lot of good things from NCRT maps. And since we all know more than 90% questions are being asked from NCRT only, so, you know, revising NCRT again and again uh, would not be possible for any student because, you know, thousands of pages are there. But NCRT map actually gives you the real insight, real crux of the content, where from the questions in need, definitely we're going to ask. So make sure 
that you first read NCRT. If you already read NCRT, then you go for the NCRT maps and revise the entire content of NCRT maps at least four to five times. So the important things gets embedded in your mind and then your mind reciprocates same thing in your NEET examination as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, so next, again, we have one more live question. Uh, Vivek, sir, uh, Ritika Goyal is asking, uh, please, uh, you know, share an ideal exam strategy for NSEJs and RMO together for class nine. Okay. See, uh, RMO, as I said earlier, that's the next stage of PRMO, right? So once you have qualified PRMO, then you are appearing for RMO examination. And for RMO, again, those six topics are important. And out of those six, the three points like number theory and your uh, this inequalities and geometry, these three are most important ones. But whatever you go in up to the NCRT level, that would not help you, that's for sure. You need additional concepts, you need additional specific books, which are for Olympiads, mathematical Olympiads. You can find uh, any competitive book for mathematical Olympiad. Also, you can go with the test series of Akash as well. So these will help you in getting through in RMO examination. But please remember there are high chances that again this year, there would be just one examination for both PRMO and RMO as being done last year. Anyway, either it's one exam or two exams. These steps will definitely help you when you go through additional book of this geometry part and numbers. Correct. So this is for RMO segment. Now moving to NSCJS. Again, NSCJS, that's the first stage for the final IJS, so International Junior Science Olympiad which is the fifth stage. So NSE, that's the national standard examination stage. That's the first stage. In general, till last, last to last year, there used to be 80 questions in that examination, 20 in each ECMB. Before uh, the outburst of this uh, pandemic, it was announced by uh, IAPT that there would be 70 questions and uh, would include one answer and multiple answer correct questions. So remember, another pattern change multiple answers are correct. That is one section in NSEJS, which is not there in other Olympiads. Now, when this pandemic problem came in the after that, uh, the pattern changed and they announced single examination for NSEJS and INJSO, the next level. Instead of saying that they will take just paper, they said they will be taking two papers, part one and part two. So now what's the pattern? IOQJS part one and part two. Part one is same of NSEJS level, but one hour only. Now, how to prepare? Let's come to that part. NSEJS, broadly, they say we are covering the syllabus of ninth standard, but it is not the case. The so syllabus is ninth to twelfth. It is required to uh, learn the concepts of all the topics from ninth standard to twelfth standard. Let's take an example in physics. When there were 20 questions, last year there were just eight questions in each subject. When there used to be 20 questions in each subject, I have always seen that in physics segment, light, electricity, which are in 10th standard, and extended boundaries of 12th standard. Similarly, gravitation, kinematics, that is motion and laws of motion, which is in 9th standard, but extended level of 11th standard. So extension is always merged beautifully in these questions. If you have not gone through with this, that extension part, you would not be able to crack it. So remember out of 20, at least four to five questions used to be of 100% higher level. Few of mixed level and very less of easier level. Similarly, when you move to bio part, you can take the topics like heredity and evolution from 10th standard, again, connected to 12. Now there are two chapters on it. And they always ask some elements which are necessarily given in 12th, not in 10th. Similarly, life processes, one chapter is there. But when it comes to 11th, there are four chapters. And you have to go through those concepts. So in this manner, you will find in every subject, PC, MB, there are topics which are related with the next level, that is 11th and 12th, and you need to go through those concepts. That's why, as you said in the last question, early starters. Anurag sir said early starters as well as fast learners. 
So yes, for them, these exams are actually designed. So this is the very first level NSCJS. And I'm sure this year again, there may be, I mean, both papers, part one and part two. So uh, once you clear part one, only then your copies of part two will be checked, which is, which is INJSO equivalent. When it is INJSO equivalent, it's not only objective. It includes subjective questions as well. So this is broadly required when you are planning for any NSC and next level, because it's not only first level you need to crack. You have to go through the last level. So uh, as you can see that this year, there were I mean, a few students who cleared initial levels and they're also going to international Olympiads. Anurag sir, would you like to add on it? Yeah, there are two students uh, from you know biology segment, uh, Anshul and Dhiren Bharadwaz. They both are going to represent India in international biology Olympiad. So it's a, certainly a proud moment for all Akashians. Yeah, so, so it's not the first level only. So I will advise the student, please go for all the stages and remember how you have to plan for it. You have to be very, very focused. Early starter, fast. Thank you, sir. Very well explained. So Anurag, sir, uh, next question we have is from Samiksha Madhya Pradesh. Uh, she wants to say, since we have already discussed the ideal preparation strategy for KVP by exam, she wants to know the tips on how to crack the KVP by interview. Yeah, that's a, a fantastic question. So uh, the very uh, important two words I would uh, say here, you know, be candid during your interview. And apart from that, whenever you will be going into the interview, the panel of teachers would be sitting here. They will be asking your favorite subject. They will be asking your topic on which you want to be questioned on that particular subject. So you need to prepare your subject on which you want to be questioned really well and a particular topic as well, where you want to be questioned and answer them confidently up to the extent you know the answer of their questions. Have really a very good eye contact with interviewers. And whenever you don't know any answer, straight away say you don't know the answer and you will read about it. Don't try to bluff them with, you know, different kinds of answers and, you know, giving them round and round answers. Don't go in and around that. They know what you are saying. So don't try to bluff them at all. And they know you can't know everything, whatever they are going to ask, but they want to ensure that you have zeal to learn. So your attitude matters there. So whatever you know, be candid confidently answer and whatever you don't know simply say sir ma'am i don't know as of now but i'll get into it and i'll read it i'll learn it that's it nothing more nothing less and prepare your subject which is most favorite to you and prepare the topic which is most favorite to you and just go there in the interview confidently say about it and get your interview cleared thank you so much sir samiksha i hope that has resolved your query so moving on, uh, Vivek sir, Himangi from Kolkata is asking, uh, I'm a student of class ninth and sometimes I get overstressed about my studies and completion of syllabus. So uh, we have so many tests every week and also there are inter-school events that takes place. So as a result, I sometimes feel fumbled, uh, you know, what should I study first and how should I prepare? So please advise. Okay. Uh, I must say that when you are thinking of so many exams, then I'm sure that you are a very serious student, but you are getting a little puzzled with the scenario, with the situation. No problem. No worries at all. See, you need to plan your exams as per the priority. Suppose your school duty is scheduled on Monday, for example, correct? And it's Friday today. I'm sure you have to give 100% planning for your duty. Second, when your UT is scheduled on Monday, they are not going to inform you on Friday only. They would be informing you at least one week in advance. For this kind of examinations, studying every day for 30 minutes, that's more than enough. More than enough. I always advise my students, please remember, I'm not at all asking you to study all six subjects every day. Because if you plan accordingly, probably you would be fumbling things, not required. 
just plan that every subject should be touched in two days time at most three days time you can give little lesser time to those subjects which you consider that can be prepared pretty fast but when it comes to pc mb segment i will say these subjects must be touched every alternate day this is very important next point do not forget to revise whatever you study in school or with us on any single day do not forget to revise before you move to the next class because if you do that in that case you would not be able to grasp what they are teaching uh, in connection with the previous one and that will give a pile a huge burden otherwise if you revise it would be like okay it's a cake walk i know it but if it is not the case you will find it's a burden so just remember it should be a part of your daily schedule next do not forget to give relax to yourself i will always say i have always asked my students please you need to find a proper break for this part that you have to relax for this 30 minutes for this one hour time that's your own time i'm not asking to study during that time but at the same time i am also not asking you to play online games like you are playing call and call on duty no when i'm saying relax please relax if you are not relaxing you are stressing if you are playing online game again you are stressing many times i have heard that students say i have studied for 3 hours now 1 hour is break time and i will play online games then after that again i will study no you are not taking relax you are stressing yourself so if you follow these points i am sure stress would be released a lot another point you said there are many test papers many test papers back to back maybe you can feel like i will advise if you are studying for 2 hours yourself please try to give one test on that forget about akash test or any other test paper you should plan at your own if you have studied for 2 hours then what you have learned how will you judge how will you assess go for daily practice test so if you say that every week there are test papers i will say you should plan at your own level daily practice test papers these will give you real assessment that where you stand and definitely with it time i'm sure by the next 2 to 3 weeks time you will find it's easy and if you find difficulty in giving continuous hours no problem again give 30 minutes slot but please do not avoid that's my simple suggestion so um, uh, vivek sir uh, after your wonderful tips i would like to add something here for himangi i think himangi was there right yeah so uh, himangi you know after following the tips uh, which is which are given by vivek sir you are definitely going to you know uh, perform well uh, in your upcoming test and uh, you will be you know uh, uh, able to relieve some of your stress as well but in addition to that i would recommend you one thing if you know back to back many tests are coming and you are appearing in test it may possible that sometimes you would not be performing up to your level of expectation right it may possible every day is not going to be same and it is not uh, even for the you know top performing students as, as well sometimes they do not perform and sometimes they really perform well so whenever you do not perform don't get yourself stressed don't think about those things where you could not do something good think about what you have done well before and what you have not done today can be done better in later time right sometime it sometime you will be able to perform on those areas as well where you could not perform today so this is just a matter of preparation which you can do by yourself and you can perform some day later right so don't get yourself stressed whenever you do not perform
Thank you, sir. Uh, this brings us to our next question. Anurag, sir, Farhan from Gandhi Nagar is asking, uh, you know, I want to know how to manage preparing for boards along with NEET as I get so involved in NEET preparation that I'm not able to get extra time to the subjective practice of science and other additional subjects. So I want to know how, you know, how to manage class 11th uh, with class 12th. Yeah, sorry, I was mute. So um, I think I had already answered uh, partly this question in the beginning, but now again, let me take you uh, through the uh, right kind of solution. For first part of your query, I would say you need not to worry at all, because if you are preparing for need, then you are by default prepared for board exams as you must be following NCRT only, because need demands NCRT. And if you are prepared for NEET, then definitely you are going through the NCRT. Let's talk about the board examination. As I mentioned earlier as well, NCRT will be Bible, Quran, Gita, whatever you follow is for board exams as well. So you need not to worry about that if you are preparing for NEET. So you are by default prepared for board exam as well. Now, all you need to do additionally is to keep on writing the descriptive question answers so that you remain good on writing the descriptive answers as well. Your writing skills get improved. So whenever you go for the descriptive questions, you go for subjective questions, you have enough confidence to write the right kind of answer. Now, once board exam remains two months, Although some, you know, change in uh, board exam pattern also, you know, uh, getting announced in some times you will be having some different kind of patterns as well. But if we consider the previous year's pattern, then once board exam remains just two months, then start attempting the mock test on board pattern just two months before. And believe you me, you would be really able to understand the right kind of writing skills, and you would be really able to score good in board exams as well. So you need not to worry about that, that you have not prepared well for board examination. You are already preparing, just you have to accept that. Now, Farhan, let me take up the second question, that how to prepare class 11th and 12th together. So my advice is, if you are in class 12th as of now, then first finish your class 12th syllabus, end to end in all the subjects, latest by end of October month, and then pick up class 11 syllabus for revision. A quick revision should be accompanied with practice of MCQs, which you may have attempted in class 11th as well in the form of assignments, many test papers and so on and so forth. So do revisit all the MCQs which you have already practiced, or if you have not practiced, then practice here along with the quick revision of concepts of class 11th. But it should also be finished in two months. Means if you have done with the class 12 syllabus by the end of October, then take the months of November and December. Remember, if board exam pattern doesn't change, if board exam schedule doesn't change, then in two months, by December only, you will be able to finish revision of entire class 11 syllabus as well. And post that, you can start revising class 12 syllabus, writing the mock test papers on board pattern till the board exam gets over. This is how you can manage class 11th and 12th both before you appear for the class 12th board examination. Now, if you are preparing for need, after class 12th board examination, you will be again getting minimum of 40 to 50 days to appear for need examination. In those days, you will be able to revise class 11th and 12th both again along with lot of attempt at, along with attempting the lot of uh, mock test papers but it would be only possible if you have already given two months of november and december to class 11th syllabus as well so this is how you will be able to perform good in board examination and obviously you will be well prepared for neat 2022 also thank you sir very much I will also add one point to Anurag sir, as he rightly mentioned that when you are managing with the board examination. So uh, just remember as the, uh, the new pattern is being announced this time that uh, MCQs are getting more and more value. 
even the last year the previous last to last year it its weightage was increased but this year when you look at this bold scenario as for 10th and 12th both it's being announced like there would be M mcqs would be having more and more value this time when these are having more and more value so obviously you are getting better chance to remain aligned with the same format as you are preparing for neat or maybe for je as well so this is something i mean is going to help you not to give you any stress at this stage so i'm sure this is going to help you out and since these exams are going to happen in november december the mcq based so uh, again your uh, subjective pattern you are not supposed to go for the entire syllabus so that's also reduced for you so uh, these things should be taken care of while you are preparing thank you so sir. Uh, sir that was indeed very helpful so uh, let's take one more live question uh, vivek sir ishan uh, from class 9th is asking how to clear backlog as i am in class 9 because every day either school uh, exams are there or other test of akash are there uh, so you know how to manage that which back backlog he is talking about that's important to understand because when you are in 9th standard i must say ishan that uh, this is july only correct your schools must have started maybe at the earliest in the month of april and then again uh, everything was shut and i'm sure that hardly 20% syllabus would have been done so far and even that that's very high on side secondly you are in ninth standard you are saying so uh, if the previous year's pattern continues like the midterm exams would be happening for ninth standard in the month of september although nothing is clear on ninth as on date so again if i consider that thing so i must say when it comes to backlog part do not uh, continue studying in the same sequence as it should have started in the month of april if you have to start with chapter 1 school is going with chapter 3 another place is going with chapter 3 you are on chapter 1 that means you are creating continuous backlog not at all my simple advice whatever currently is being taught follow word by word that thing as well as follow or as well as give a block of 1 hour for backlog portion depending upon the subject if it is maths can give one and half two hours if it is english can plan for one hour so it depends upon the subject as well i'm sure if you just uh, plan the day schedule the event for a month for a week for a day obviously step by step it has to be scheduled in that case you can cover entire block backlog of 9 in just one month time just one month time as i said in the beginning there are not too many chapters which subject you are talking about chemistry how many chapters are there total five just three would be coming in the half yearly physics total five which subject you have a backlog so don't worry just one month time continue with the current syllabus of a school or wherever you are studying and give extra time daily because you have to cover it because you have planned if you have not planned then nothing can be done but if you have planned it can be covered comfortably all right thank you so much sir that was very helpful uh, so moving on anurag sir uh, we have a student ashman from delhi he says uh, i regularly devote 6 hours to online schooling then 2 hours to self study additional 4 hours in akash every alternate day other than this there are so many extra curricular activities as well so please suggest a time table uh, for the same as it becomes very difficult to prepare for test to homework and then submit assignments as well uh, right uh, so this is also a big problem for uh, you know so many students so ashman uh, let me tell you uh, you know everything is driven through your plan and how well you have planned and uh, how poorly you have planned so this is all about that as you know vivek sir has rightly mentioned just before few minutes so if you really need to plan well then let me tell you something about your you know self study duration and all those stuffs uh, i i am trying to quickly calculate in in my mind how how many hours you can devote and how you can devote for your self studies 
first of all 2 hours of daily self study along with 6 hours of schooling and 4 hours of akash classes is really good so i am happy about that because you are giving 2 hours of daily self study along with 6 hours of schooling and 4 hours of akash classes now those days where you don't have akash classes add 3 hours more to your self study and make it 5 hours because you are actually studying two hours along with your school and Akash, then those days where Akash classes are not there, you can add three hours more. So it becomes five hours. Now, and those days where you don't have a school also, add four more hours to your self-study and you will be able to put total nine hours of self-study. Now, let me assume five days school and four days Akash classes are there in a week. You will be able to put minimum 31 hours of self-study per week. And that means average 4.5 hours per day. And 4 to 5 hours average daily self-study is really good to manage both competition and school studies. This 4 to 5 hours average daily is not actually happening daily, but you have planned your week in such a way that those days where you are having school and Akash both, you are studying just two hours as a self-study. But when you do not have Akash classes, you have stressed it. You have made it five hours a day. And when you don't have school and Akash both, then you are stretching it up to nine hours of self-study. So if you average it out, then four to five hours of daily study is really good to manage both competition and school examination, right? Now, you always get some additional holidays from school, from Akash as well. Now you have to plan those days also judiciously so that you can utilize for clearing the backlog, whatever happens to you. Because always remember, if you are studying four to five hours dedicately, even though you will be having some of the backlogs. So those backlogs are, or maybe some revision kind of stuff, that can be cleared in those holidays as well. And, and these kind of efforts you need to put till you clear your need JE. Post that, you have to enjoy your additional holidays. You go and enjoy, enjoy those days also. But till you clear your need or JE examination, give some extra efforts, put in some extra energy on your holidays as well so that you are well prepared. And so putting all those things together, you will be able to dedicate eight to 10 hours self-study on an average daily, including your holidays to cope up with the left out things. So this is how you can manage. This is all, you know, depending upon just one thing, how really you plan yourself. And if you are studying two hours daily and you are continuing just two hours daily, even though if you do not have Akash classes or your school classes, then of course you are not well planned and you are missing out. So your day should be planned according to your activities. Some are mandatory activities. You have to attend Akash classes. Of course, you can't lose that. So on the, those days, if you are giving you know, uh, less effort on your self studies, it is all okay. If you are having a school, then definitely it is also mandatory stuff. You ca cannot lose that. So if you are putting little less effort in your self-studies, little less number of hours on your self-studies, it is all okay. But when you do not have both, and then if you are putting only two hours, then there is a challenge. So your day should be planned properly with well anticipation. Thank you so much, sir. So our uh, next question, Abhivek sir, we have from Jivika. She's asking, is preparation for NTSC enough for board exams? Uh, I will say, as I said in the beginning, for NTSC stage one, it is state-wise. And your stage two is obviously this national level, that is NCRT level. Now it depends which board you are studying. If you are studying in ICSC board and you say that NTSC is sufficient, no. Because state, which state you are from, if you are from Tamil Nadu and you're studying in ICSC board and you are saying it is sufficient, not at all. So it totally depends upon your board. Now, if your state, if you are from the state board and you are preparing for NTSC, 100% you are covering everything without any thought. So it depends upon the board. If in general, CBSE, ICSC, you have to go with the entire curriculum. 
Thank you, sir. So uh, before we conclude, let's take one last question. Uh, Anurag, sir, Anirudh is asking, why is board exams so important in class 10th and class 12th? And do uh, the board exams decide our career? Uh, so, you know, uh, the question is really very tricky. But of course, in the context of Indian education system, it does matter in long run. Your score in board exams gets considered for admission in many colleges for graduation and post-graduation. If you are going for uh, you know, basic sciences or allied sciences, although I'm not talking about professional courses like you know, uh, courses of medicine or engineering. However, some of the entrance examination also put a threshold percentage score to be eligible for uh, you know, writing the uh, entrance exam for professional courses as well, although they are quite low. So you know, uh, that, that, that is not a big concern. But uh, you know, taking admission in a lot of medical college, a lot of lot of uh, basic science colleges, allied science colleges, definitely you need to have a certain score which are good enough to be eligible for getting admission. In addition, you know, uh, board exam marks uh, sometimes matter uh, during job placements as well, right? Because you know, if you are doing engineering. And if you have completed engineering during job placements, your all the credentials definitely gets considered. So in Indian education system, uh, of course, uh, the class 10th and class 12 board marks matter. So you know, do not lose on that. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, this brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, thank you so much, Vivek sir and Anurag sir for joining us for today's webinar and sharing such valuable insights and re uh, resolving the queries of students. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, ma'am, for having me here. So uh, we would also like to thank everyone for attending the session and particularly for all the great questions. Uh, we'll appreciate if you could take out some time and share your valuable feedback regarding today's session. You'll find the link to the feedback form in the description box below. So thank you again for attending today's uh, webinar. We hope you stay safe and healthy and we look forward to joining you again soon for another enlightening session. Uh, take care and keep prepared.